Luca Guadagnino, Taylor Russell, and Chloe Sevigny. Please join me on stage. Thank you. Welcome back, Luca. Thank you. Welcome back. Chloe, Taylor, it's great to see you here. Congratulations to all of you. <sighs> well, I want to start with, there's a lot we can dig into, right? We have like 20 minutes. So I've got about, well, I've got like 65 minutes of questions that I'm going to have to limit. And then I want to make sure we get at least two questions from the audience. So get ready. Um, only well, two. Sorry. Sorry. We don't have a lot of time, Chloe. It's going to be a quick... Okay. Well, let's start with, Luca, at your introduction. You called this movie a fable. So let's start there. Uh, to each of the three of you, tell me about the fableness of of this movie and what, what drew you to it. So we'll start with Luca, who well, originated it. Um, it's a fable because it's uh, it's like a, a tale of archetypes, and it's about uh, um, our heroes being these two young, uh, beautiful creatures who have to face a lot of uh, um, adversaries and a lot of adversities, um, and they have to overcome probably the biggest one, we being who they are and how they can survive being who they are, which I think. Uh, being a fable is also a paradigm for what can be found in it for each of us, I guess, and I hope. Mm. Um, I mean, the fable element of it, there we go, um, didn't really set in for me until I watched the movie and then I realized that it, that that was very present, but during, no, it didn't feel like a fable at all. <laughs> <laughs> it felt very real. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more about that. Tell me more about, about it. the reality of it. Um, well, I mean, I, it kind of has to feel real to play it, um, and all, and we were in a, an incredible environment too, uh, in the tri-state area, and also in Nebraska. And there's a harshness in that landscape, but also something so welcoming in the vastness of it like a loneliness that you can uh, stick to. So yeah, yeah, it, needless to say, it felt there was a lot to sink into. Um, yeah. Chloe, tell me about this distinction between the fable qualities of the story and the reality of it. I think that's um, better for Luca to answer. <laughs> Which aspects, what, what drew, tell me what drew you? Well, Luca. I mean, okay, Luca me and I had shot uh, We Are Who We Are yeah. uh, like a year and a half prior. Yeah. It's the best. It's the best. Oh, Taylor. It's the best. <laughs> and of course, I fell in love with Luca and I was already a fan of his as a filmmaker and then him as a person. And he... FaceTimed me, which he likes to do, which I hate doing, which is really weird. He I always love face he loved FaceTime. I love to FaceTime. Also, like from an iPad. <laughs> she never pick up every every five times. <laughs> you don't want to like sometimes you don't want to have that. I love story. to FaceTime people randomly. I think actually maybe you texted first, and then you wanted to talk. You said I have a small but pivotal role, and I think I wrote back like I'll come for one line for you. And then I got the script, I was like, oh, there's not even one line. <laughs> it's a nice little, you know, voiceover. But uh, of course, so yeah, I mean, I jump at the chance, of course, to work with Luca in any way, shape, or form. And, 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 and you know, having had just had a child um, over the pandemic and thinking about, you know, this mother role and what lengths we'll go to to protect our children and, you know, um, all of that was really playing into how I thought about the character and the story overall. Okay, so I want to build on what Chloe was just saying and ask you about Luca, and then Luca, I'm going to ask you about these two actors you've worked with. So, uh, Chloe or Taylor, what is it about Luca? L Chloe, you said that you were, it was about working with him and also about getting to know him as a person. So tell us something about I what think drew... spontaneity. I mean, I remember like we were shooting We Are We Are, which was like, well, how many episodes is it? Like 10 or something? Eight. Eight. And like not a single shot list or anything. And she'll be like, what are we shooting today? I was like, excuse me? Like... <laughs> 
but there's a preparedness, but it's not. It's just like he, it's very instinctual. It's really emotional. He feels what's happening in the scene as we read it and working it out. And it's just like, it's amazing just to watch someone work in that, in that way. You know, you come with, I've worked with so many directors who've already shot things in their head and they're like, have this set thing that they have to do. They have to make their days and look I, I used to do that. And then I was, I realized that it limited the way. Yeah. You, 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 you. Yeah, I, I, I used to do that, and it, uh, it limited very much the way of making the movie, in my opinion, because it limited the opportunity of seeing them performing and then understanding what the camera had to do to follow the performance. Yeah, I just fell in love with his process, and like even if I'm just coming for a day, I just want to be around it to watch it and, mm -hmm. and see how he works things out in that big brain of his over there. Luca, was there a movie or, or a moment that... that, that, that changed how you think about the way you work that you yeah see? yeah yeah many many but in particular i Was remember gradual no i i had a revelation watching a, a, a sort of behind the scene uh, technically it was a documentary on the making of fanny and alexander uh -huh. and i saw uh bergman being so tentative like he was composing with the actors the, the what they called the movement in the frame like how the performance was moving and then he was applying the camera to that. Mm -hmm. And to see him, like this legend, being tentative, being like lost in the process and finding it, gave me a great confidence. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Taylor, tell us about Luca. Why Luca? <laughs> um, well, just before we met for this movie, I watched all of We Are Who We Are, and I fell deeply in love with it. And um, what struck me then, I wrote him a letter, and it all kind of happened at the same time. But I felt that I, I didn't, I couldn't comprehend how this person was so eternally youthful. That's what hit me. And I thought he transcends generations somehow. I don't know. I wanted to get to the bottom of it. Um, and I think it's th one of the magical qualities of Luca, although there are many. Um, but that's, that's what hit me. And uh, then when we talked on the phone, I felt like he was really funny on our FaceTime. You, you too. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to, I don't know, be around you. So... And obviously, he's the best director in the world, so. Well, Luca, same question, yes. Right, I mean, yeah. Same question, same question to you, Luca, about these two actors you worked with, uh, to well, about Chloe and Taylor. I, I, it, everything starts from me being a, a, an audience member, always. Like, I have uh, the privilege of uh, loving cinema, like all of you guys and girls here. So, and, and so, like, uh, when you watch a movie and you are inspired by the movie, and then you realize that you are drawn into the movie by the way the characters behave on the screen, and then you realize that this behavior comes from the experience and the investment of the actors, it's just fantastic. And, and uh, it, for both of them, I, I was a fan. I was a, a real admirer of their craft. And I knew Taylor from Waves, and um, it was immediate. It was immediate that when I when I started to think of Marin, it was immediate that I thought of 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 of, of Taylor, and Chloe again. Uh, she's she, she, you inspired me so many times, and and um, and then we met and we did we are, which was fun and great to do, and we we became friends and. Um, I think we became friends the first time we met in Cannes, in that restaurant, in that hotel. That was fun. Um, Eating like chicken yes. fingers or something gross. But, but you know, like, and, and <laughs> so... Chicken fingers in Cannes. Yes. Chicken well, fingers you know, in the south of France. you know, you're always for food there. Yes, all the time. Yeah. And, and, and also the other quality for me is to, to meet people that I, that becomes my family. So now we are part of our family. So it's re meeting again, having more adventures to do. Yeah. Um, I don't want to embarrass you, Luca. You sent you sent me an email back in June. I forgot what I wrote. But but I, I bring it up because it it contextualizes. I've been thinking about your film since I first saw it in June, and I've seen it a couple times since then. Um, but you said something in this note that all of your movies are about outcasts, and you talked about. Uh, 
there is something about the disenfranchised, something about people living on the margins of society and this idea that you're drawn or that you explore outcasts. Um, there's a lot more here that I, you know, we could have a whole, like I said, an hour conversation about it. But, but I want to start with that piece just to give you a chance to sort of elaborate on that. Uh, you clearly had thought about that in, in, in contextualizing this film. You called it a fable. <coughs> um, what, why do you think that way or why do you... I realized recently that all my movies are about that. Um, it's about someone who is not, who is almost invisible, who is not seen for what they are, who is gravitating away from the center of gravity, mm -hmm. who is uh, naturally pushed out of the f center of the frame. Mm -hmm. um, I'm saying that because I'm thinking of what I did. I realized it recently because uh, I think we were all hit by the craziness and the strangeness of the pandemic and the lockdowns, which gave us the perspective of our remoteness towards society. And I put together the dots somehow. And then I also thought about myself. You know, like I, I am the child of an Algerian woman and a Sicilian Italian man. I grew up in Ethiopia. I moved from Ethiopia to Sicily and then I moved then to Rome. Like there is a lot of um, uh, movement in my life and there is a lot of like uh, off the centerness mm -hmm. of being. Um, and I think like um, I'm very much drawn toward those who have uh, a very specific perspective that may not be uh, usual, but at the same time, uh, in a way, it's a sort of a way of being that it's very tender and dear to me. Mm. You use the word tender, and the last thing I'll refer to in this email is you used the word in the email, tenderness and affectionate aspects to these characters, creating that, connecting with that tenderness and affectionate aspects of these characters in this fable world that is that has violence and has uh, sh shock and surprise. The, the, life is violent. It's about friction. It's about contrast. It's about um, like uh, 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 continuous uh, uh, necessities of, of a sort of conflict. Life is conflict. And uh, to say, to, to avoid it, it's a little bit childish and a little bit social media, but, mm. um, mm. Um, mm -hmm. and then because they want to avoid conflict, they go into very aggressive conflict on the social media. But, sure. Um, sure. Um, but like at the end of the day, um, like, I think that, if we, as filmmaker, take the opportunity through the lens of making a movie to put ourselves in the shoes of the, pe the people that you would never put your shoes on, your, your feet onto their shoes, it's quite fantastic because it's like it allows you a, pr a privileged spot can be co uncomfortable, but at the same time makes you see things that you would not normally see through that perspective. And... Uh, um, uh, Chloe's character, um, in her uh, in her letter, writes to the daughter, "There is not," uh, she says, "in the world of love, there is not place for monsters," and I actually believe that it's the contrary. And the movie, it's in a way a testament of that. Mm. What's you. the place of love for monsters, actually? What's the place of love for? Mon Thank you. Okay, we don't have a lot of time. Two. Chloe, I said two, right? Two questions. Three. Let's say three. We have to be really Wait, fast, I'm in though. New York for They're the last few quick. hours. Okay. Very quickly, who has the first one real fast? Where are you? Somebody. I can't see everybody. So right here. Yes. Question about cinematic influences. Uh, he saw Carpenter's Starman. Oh, this is beautiful. Starman is one of my favorite movies. I, I put a lot of times in, the, in my best list. Um, uh, I... I uh, I, I think I, I understood that I, my love for men watching that movie and seeing the beauty of Jeff Bridges. Um, uh, come on. Um, uh, but I didn't talk about it consciously, which is interesting. I thought a lot about William Eggleston's work, mostly. A lot. I think also, I, when I saw the first time uh, They Live By Night, the Nick Ray movie, I couldn't, for, I couldn't forget this shot of the car in this 
landscape seen from above, which was technically already a daring point of view from that master. So I, 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 that, that was a very strong influence too. I was going to mention that the cinematographer is in the house. Oh, sorry. We have with us well, this great, masterful, young, vibrant, divine, Belarusian Arseny Kachaturan, who made Lens the movie. <laughs> and, 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 and Arseny, Arseny, uh, was 28 or 27 when he did this movie. So he's, he's a master, you know? And we also have Marisa Lombardo, who was the set designer of the movie. Hey, Marisa. <laughs> and lastly, we have like someone I don't want to part with ever again in my life, which is my prop master, Matt Marks, who knows everything about the objects of life. Okay, before we get the hook, who else? Okay, I want to go further back. I can't see everybody, but I see someone. Is there a hand over here? Oh, okay, someone's waving really wildly, so... Okay, go, go, go. Patience in how you tell stories. How do you balance that? Uh -huh. I don't know. I think it's about... <laughs> I truly really don't know. I Thank you, though. I, I think it's about observing and then uh, having the patience of seeing what happens in behavior. I mean it resorts ultimately to the brilliancy of the people I'm privileged to work with, the actors I'm privileged to work with. Okay, we're almost out. Luca said you wanted one more and you're about to leave. The, so, okay, someone waving way in the back in the center. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you're the last one. Your, your, creative, your creative choice between um, showing or not showing what's, what's too graphic. Uh, why we haven't seen a lot of Lee... Um, more graphically. Gra grabbing? Well, I don't know if it's true. I mean, we see him having a very generous bite of the wonderful Jake Horowitz, I guess, right? <laughs> he make him come and then he eat him. <laughs> Sorry. It, 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 this is what you... No, I think, I think it's like... I think... <laughs> I think it's... <laughs> I think it's like... Uh, um, like every scene shift, you know, dances around the point, the, perspective, the point of view. Like when we meet Lee for the first time, he, 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 we, he's, on, he's in the periphery of the frame, uh, particularly because he's very much someone in the periphery. And then she follows her, literally her nose, and that's where he appears back. So we have to be with her in that moment. And when he goes and kills Bootman, uh, we, it's, it's, it's a bridge between her and him. She's seeing the act being done so that she can then go with him. So it's, and I think it was important, and we think we can end here, that the actual act of, 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 of cannibalism in the movie were um, mostly suggested and, and they were not uh, the, 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 the shock value moment of the movie, but was more about what made these people uh, obliged to this condition and how they could escape it or not. Thank you. Chloe, Taylor, Luca, thank you. Thank you.